I have benefited from having some great mentors in my life, and I am now able to return the favor and be a mentor to other folks. And there is something that keeps popping up as I observe my mentees and my friends and just individuals in general, as I, as I look at various issues that people are currently facing, I realize that so many things have happened in the past, so many other choices that have led up to the current situation. And sometimes it's really tough to fix. So today I'm going to talk about what some of those things are. I'm not going to really provide the solutions at this point. That's not really, uh, th that would take too long. Um, that is something that you can decide. You can look to me for advice to other people who you like or trust more. Uh, look for people who have similar values uh, to your values, because maybe my values are different and you should certainly have a mentor who shares most of your primary values. So let's look at a number of the choices, the decisions, the, the things that happen in life that can lead to certain situations that, that you're in and they compound upon each other. So let's begin with the first thing is what kind of personality have you developed throughout your life? Now, when we're born, we're born with certain predisposed personality traits. However, depending on our parents, depending on the environment we're in, we've probably end up developing a particular personality. And you can choose as a six-year-old or as a 10-year-old or as a 20-year-old or a 50-year-old, you can choose to change some of those aspects about your personality, to work on them. Um, you can make some choices that uh, are not a conscious choice, but you, but you can maybe choose to have a, a resting, scowling face rather than a resting, smiling face. And if you do that and you go through your life with a very straight face, not responding to people with an animated, normal or above normal, animated, emotional response to them when they're talking to you, et cetera. Oh, my gosh. Are your choices uh, or are your your results of, of this going to be impacted? Um, if, if you don't smile at the principal and say hi when you see them in the hallway at school when you are eight years old, that's going to be a difference in life. If every time you see them, you smile and say, hi, hey, thanks for all you do to help with my education. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine what a different outcome you're going to have after 12 years of government uh, schooling? That's just one little tiny example. But this personality thing is huge. It's up to you what you do now and you made a bunch of choices and choices by not making decisions up to this point that have probably landed you where you are. And maybe it's landed you with a ton of friends and all of your former bosses love you. I mean, who knows? Um, you do. <laughs> I don't know. You, you could examine this and know if you chose to, but that's one thing that makes a difference. Another is what has your diet been uh, for your whole life? Did you grow up in a home where you were eating a bunch of prepackaged carbs with chemicals in them and like the school lunches kind of thing, public school lunches? Like, was that the kind of diet you grew up on? Or were your parents into a carnivore diet or a vegan diet or just a really healthy organic diet? Or, well, that's going to make a difference in how your brain develops, how your body develops. Um, I have some friends whose families were, I think, uh, raw food vegans. And so during as their whole childhood, as their brains developed and their body bodies developed, that was their diet. And their parents thought it through carefully and made those choices for their children. And that will certainly be a different outcome for those children. They will certainly be in a different position today. Their bodies will be different. Their brains will be different than if they'd eaten junk food or if they'd eaten all meat growing up. It, it makes a difference. And that's not something you could choose up to a certain age or, or point. Playing sports. Did you play sports as a kid? Did you get out and get a lot of exercise or did you sit on the couch and use electronics? Um, did you play organized sports? If you did, you learned a lot of valuable lessons there and you learned some bad lessons. You probably developed this sense of competition, um, this just this inner love of competition, or maybe you got disgusted by it. Maybe you were treated really poorly and bullied uh, because you were in organized sports school sports or whatever, but it will definitely make an impact on how the rest of your life will go. Um, huge impact. I've mentioned school a couple times while you were in 
school, and, and I'm assuming that you are probably an English speaker if you're listening to this, and you probably are from the United States. So I'm kind of uh, making some generalizations there. But if you attended a government school or a typical even private Christian school kind of thing. Um, if you if you got the regular schooling, like you think about fish, they're just gorgeous, but they're in a school. Well, that's kind of what schooling is about, is getting everybody to be together. And I'm not going to go off on a tangent here. Read John Taylor Gatto's work and watch his videos. Um, did you choose to learn during your school years? And I don't mean just at school. Um, you don't have as much opportunity to learn truly valuable things while you're in the classroom. Um, that's not what it's set up for. But did you choose to read books after school? Like, did you go to sleep reading a book on physics or history or whatever was of interest to you? Did you learn a lot of stuff? Did you go out and work a side job when you were 12 years old? And, and did you have a summer job helping the farmer down the road or working at the local Dairy Queen? Whatever. Did you... What did you do to actually educate yourself about important things um, up to age 18 or so? Um, that will make a big difference in your life, won't it? What kind of, I'm, I'm looking down here at my notes each time. Um, what friends did you choose to have? What kind of friends? Were they adventurous friends? Were they the alpha in the situation usually? Or were you the person who led your little clique? Um, were, you, did, were, were you friends who went out and did wild, crazy things like climbing trees and jumping bicycles or motorcycles? Or, or were you more of a, a studious debate club uh, kind of uh, kid? H how did you choose these friends? Did you choose them because they were ahead of you in the areas that you wanted to improve upon? Probably not at age 10. You probably weren't saying, you know, who would be a good influence on me? And the five people with whom you spend the most time or you're likely to turn out to be the, the average of those people. And you probably weren't thinking that deeply at age 10. But hopefully by age 13 or 14 or 15, you started getting at least a few friends that were good for you. Imagine if you didn't make great choices and you chose to hang out with the friends who were going out and... Uh, burglarizing houses or robbing houses. Um, if you did that, well, I bet your life had some really big turns there that might have landed you in jail for a year or the last 20 years. And then you got out and now you're trying to rebuild um, those little life choices, those little decisions. They make a big difference later on. And and the, the difference that these, and I think so far I'm only up to, uh, uh, no, six of them I've given so far. And these are just, this is not an all-inclusive list. But imagine if you, I'm looking here at my, my notes, imagine if you had a scowling, unhappy personality and you didn't ever try to fix that. What if you had a really bad diet the whole time? You never played sports. You chose not to learn anything other than what the government school teachers were, were telling you in the classroom. You had bad friends. You picked friends who were just not motivated, not very smart, just going down the wrong road. Um, and while you're in school, you didn't choose to use your off time to actually learn stuff. Um, imagine how different your situation would be than the person who did just the opposite, who made really good choices that whole time. The, the new uh, number of opportunities that you would have. And, and I'm going to kind of continue on the, the eating thing. Have you exercised? Have you chosen to be really physically fit or are you fat? Um, and this goes for both men and women, especially for women, I think, because I, I think the psychologists say that that a, a mate is chosen based, uh, a guy bases it more on physical appearance and uh, women b make their choices based more on the capability. The the guy who has some money, who has proven that he's he can support the the family um, that's just i think among a number of mammals including humans that's kind of the normal way things go so if you are a, a gal have you made choices that have led to you being fat um, especially if you were genetically predisposed to be fat or have you done the hard work and uh, limited your caloric intake caloric intake and uh, exercise a lot and you know probably a tough tough thing to do but have you made those choices if you are a guy and, and i'm kind of going back on what i said because i think women care what guys look like too if you're a guy and you are now 25 years old and you are 20 or 200 pounds overweight that is going to especially the 200 pounds that's going to greatly reduce the number of potential uh mates i'm assuming you're heterosexual but i guess it goes either way or eight million ways whatever gender uh, it's up to you, but just know that if you weigh 
350 pounds and you don't have a good personality, you have just limited yourself to a very small pool of women and they might not be the kind of women who you're attracted to. So if you're a guy, which my audience primarily is, if you're, if you're not flip this around, make it work for you. If you're a guy and you are interested in a gal, what kind of gal are you interested in? And if you are interested in a gal who is five foot 10, 120 pounds, works out a bunch, she's a fitness model or could be, and she is working in uh, as a surgeon. If that's the kind of gal you want, then you have to be the kind of guy that a gal like that would generally pick. Sorry if that's not politically correct, but that's kind of the math of life in that little area. So... As I'm talking here about what you choose to eat and if you exercise, et cetera, um, and I'm speaking to you as a, as a 50, 60 pound overweight dude. And these, this wasn't a, I wouldn't say a, a conscious choice. It was a conscious because I make choices of immediate pleasure of another glass of wine or a bunch of creamer in my coffee or a uh, big baked potato with my steak. I, I make those choices because I want the immediate gratification, even though I intellectually know that they're going to lead to exactly where they've led. It's math. It's like, that's how stuff works. So I have to pay the costs for looking like I do and feeling like I do with hurting back and bones hurt and joints and all this. Yeah, that's what you get when you're fat. Um, so that's a big, big thing. Uh, next on my list is uh, what state or town do you choose to live in? And this is something that in life, uh, you, you, you don't really have much of a choice up to a certain age, but when you're ready to spread your wings and leave the home, uh, your parents' home, you do kind of get to choose. Do you go to a big city? Do you go to a university? Do you move to the countryside or stay in the countryside? Do you stay in your little small town in the middle of nowhere that's the on the bottom half of socioeconomic scale? Uh, the, the average household income in your county is $23,000 a year? Or do you move to Beverly Hills or Aspen or Vail or uh, some wealthy place? Um, do you move to a place where there's a lot of thinking and movement, even if it's not good stuff? Like I'm thinking of San Francisco, the Bay Area. Do you move to that area where there's a lot of action going on since the 80s? And yeah, there's a lot of stinking thinking there also, but there's also a lot of action happening. Or do you choose to move to Cortez, uh, Colorado, uh, or some place that just doesn't have much going on. And no offense to Cortez. I've never been there. I think I saw it on a map and I think it's somewhere south of Denver. And as I envision it, it's hot in the summers and just kind of miserable high desert, really nothing going for it. And I don't know, maybe Flint, Michigan's a better example or, or some place in Pennsylvania. I don't know. Uh, you know what a, in your, according to your values, what a crappy town is and what a really cool town is. Um, you get to make those choices. And as a, a gal uh, I used to date once said, um, the closer you are to the money, the more stress that you'll have and the more money will rub off on you. And so if you grew up living and working in Beverly Hills, there are probably going to be way more financial opportunities than if you grew up in Artesia, New Mexico, um, you're just going to have a lot more opportunities. However, you're also going to have had a lot more stress. And I don't know which is better. These are just choices that you could make that will have a huge impact on the direction of your life. And then once you've moved to this town, where in that town do you live? So I could say something like, oh, you live in Los Angeles. Well, where in Los Angeles? Do you live on the in a really poor area, in a poor area apartment complex? Or do you live in the wealthy area or the middle class area? Uh, this is going to make a huge difference because if you're living in the poor area and you don't have a uh, laundry machine or a, a clothes washer and a dryer in your house or in your apartment, then you're going to probably be going to a laundromat. And if you're going to a laundromat, you're going to be meeting and talking to a very different group of people than you would if you were doing laundry at your own house and using the downtime between each load to read a book or have a chat in a philosophy room or, uh, I don't know, do something productive with maybe a higher level of person. Um, than you would meet at a laundromat. And, and I'm not putting down, yeah, I am putting down poor people. I think it's better to have money than not to have money. And I have gone to many, many, many laundromats in my youth. Um, I don't think I have used one 
Well, you know, when I travel, I think I did go to one in uh, Florida five or 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, but I mean, generally as an adult, by the time I was 25, I ate or 21, I had organized my life in such a way that there was always a washer and dryer in my house. Um, so that gave me a lot more time to do other things. And I had some benefits. Uh, I think one of my big benefits that helped me come to that was that I grew up with many of the homes we lived in growing up. I think I uh, moved 21 times by the time I was 16 years old. And in that time, much of the time we didn't have electricity or running water. And so I would use the old washing machine that you, you move the handle back and forth to agitate it. And then you turn the the wheel that you put the, uh, the, the two wheels, you feed your clothing through them and that rings them out before you hang them on the clothesline. So I grew up for many of the years in that kind of environment. I didn't like it. And so I decided, hey, I don't like abject poverty in the Appalachians. I want to make a change in life. And my mom helped me with that, even though she had made a number of choices that led to me being reared in poverty in the Appalachians. Um, I then made some choices to get out of that. And one of those, just an example here, was the the washing machine. But the long story, uh, long story short of that is, the part of town you live in kind of matters and the the type of house you live in, the type of apartment, the type of mobile home, the type of cardboard box, the type of mansion, that's going to make a big difference for the rest of your life. So eh, might you want to make a good choice there. Hey, Shepard Thinks listeners, ever dreamt of driving a car that merges freedom with exhilaration? Meet the 2024 Porsche 911. This isn't just a car. It's a tribute to 60 years of automotive excellence. Imagine the roar of its engine and the thrill of navigating through winding roads with racetrack precision. The 2024 Porsche 911, especially the limited production ST model, offers a visceral, unfiltered driving experience. It's more than a car. It's a celebration of liberty and sensory pleasure, designed for those who cherish the roar of the engine and the freedom of the drive. Drive the 2024 Porsche 911 and experience liberty on wheels. Okay, here's another thing. Who are your adult friends? I'm assuming that if you're listening to this, uh, you're probably an adult. Most young'uns don't really get around to thinking deeply uh, until they are more of an adult age, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, or unfortunately 25 or 30. Um, But what kind of friends do you choose to have now? What kind of friends have you chosen over the last 10 years? And boy, oh boy, is this going to make a difference. Are they people who encourage you? Are they people who toss ideas out and, hey, I'm thinking about starting up a, a frozen pizza delivery service or blah, blah, blah. And and are you talking to them? And, oh, well, what's your target demographic? And do you think they're enough in this city? Are you thinking about smart ideas? Um, or are you thinking about other stuff that's not as, I don't know, not as smart? Um, what kind of friends do you have? That's going to really determine what direction you go in life. Um, uh, another thing, and I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, when you leave a job, do you burn the bridge or could you go back to all your bosses or most of your bosses over your whole lifetime and say, Hey, just so you know, I'm out in the job market again, and I'm looking for opportunities. Um, if you hear of anything, will you keep me in mind? And they say, Oh my gosh, you were awesome. I wish we had a position open right now. I'm going to check with a few of my friends and see what, what, What's out there? Um, what would they say? Or would they be like, oh, yeah, we'll keep, keep you in mind and then not keep you in mind. Um, well, it depends on how you chose to leave that situation. And maybe you've had a long stream of getting fired or a long string of uh, quitting jobs. That, eh, I don't like this. I don't like the way they're treating me. And you quit and you quit. And you quit all these different jobs. Well, all that's going to make a difference uh, where you are now. How do you spend your time? Uh, Do you spend some of your time like an hour a day or 10 minutes a day uh, on one of those cool Menza books that have the brain puzzles or whatever, where you try to figure out the the train leaves the town at this time and, and blah, blah. And it is a whole scenario. And then another, um, if something is blue and black, but not red, and it, it are these fun riddles that make your brain exercise and work. Are you doing that? Um, that'll make a difference how your life goes. Um, do you know what your IQ is? Did you ever care enough? Like when you were 20 or 25 or whatever to go out and have it checked, see what it was. Um, could be an interesting thing to know. Could help you make choices about what direction you go in life. Uh, do you read uh, nonfiction books or do you do something like sitting around watching sports? 
do you invest a bunch of time? Like, do you know the, your favorite team, your sports ball team? Do you know the the players' names and their height and their their weight or whatever it matters, their their batting averages or whatever they do in in football? Do you know all that stuff? Is that where you have invested a bunch of your brain power? Um, and it's it's. I'm not saying that it's uh, uh makes you a bad person if you have chosen to know all about that stuff. It's just. It's just going to kind of make a difference in where your life goes. If you have dedicated five or 10 hours a week for your whole adult life to following that or some imaginary, I don't know, Dungeons and Dragons or something like that, it's going to put you in a very different position in life than if you had spent that same amount of time reading nonfiction books because you're really curious about debating or history or uh, I don't know, business, something like personal development, something like that. You know, you're just going to be in a very different position in life, depending on which of those choices you've made. Um, are you taking learning uh, opportunities like going to Toastmasters or did you go and at least go to 10 Toastmasters meetings and participate in them with an open mind and try to learn? Uh, if so, you're probably a much better public speaker, even in small groups, than you otherwise would have been. Unless you're one of those people who are just born lucky and and you made some other good choices about the friendship groups you were in and you played sports and ended up the team captain and the coach gave you some good advice on how to lead a team. Um, all these little tiny things, if you didn't have them earlier in life... Have you then spent the last five or 10 years improving yourself in those areas? Have you gone to Toastmasters? Have you gone to the uh, little adult education classes that the local community college offers of a cooking class or a welding class or whatever? Have you taken advantage of, of a bunch of those? Um, they can lead to so many things here. Let me just I'm going to toss in a little example here. Years ago, I went to uh, probably 10 years or more ago, I went to a uh, class that the community college put on and it was for small business owners. And I met a guy there who was really interesting and he lived in a town about three hours away and he owned a pl uh, plastic injection molding factory or company or whatever. And we, ch we just chatted a little bit and kind of liked each other just, you know, three minutes worth in the classroom, but we left with a positive impression of each other. And then two, three, four, five years after that, I was going to be going through his town and I looked him up and I said, hey, I met you in a class, in the college class three, four, five years ago, whatever. And uh, hey, I'm coming through your town and I'm wondering if uh, you would have time for me to swing by and uh, either we could go to lunch or could I take a look at your factory and you tell me a little bit about it? And he's like, oh, absolutely. And so my wife and I went to his factory and we were watching these Magpul AR-15 magazines being uh, manufactured, watching the machines spit out the components and, and, and looking at all the different inventions he had. He had, he had these folders in his office. He showed us like thick probably three inch uh, thick folders, page after page after page of his invention ideas. And he said, I'm a really low risk kind of guy. And he said, so I haven't done any of these. He says, I just don't have the guts to do them. But some of these are some really good ideas. And he said, oh, and by the way, you're welcome to any of them. I, I just ask you if you, you know, you'd use our factory to do it. But if you ever want to just sit down here and look through these and come up with one an idea for one of these uh, or come up with one of my ideas and improve upon it and have it done, uh, you're welcome to the idea. And I learned that there are over 60,000 kinds of plastic. And I learned uh, that, that they pour the pellets into the machine and that in order to make a like a 55 gallon uh, trash can, you would need a machine like the size of a mobile home uh, in order to make that. Like all these interesting little tidbits. And that came from me going to a little two or three or four or five, whatever hour uh, business development class on the side and the connection that I made. There are so many things in life like that, that the little tiny choices, I could have chosen not to go to that class and my brain wouldn't have as much good information in it uh, as it currently does if I hadn't done that. And, I, and there's certainly many opportunities that I didn't take advantage of that I should have uh, or that I could have and my life would have be different. It'd be better or worse or whatever. Okay, next on my list. Um, do you date? 
Do, do you choose to go out and date uh, people uh, who you have a, uh, I don't know, what's a sexual interest in or a mating interest in, whatever? Um, do you do that? Or do you have a, a celibate life? Have you somehow been able to go to a psychologist and uh, have them fix you so that you don't have that interest, so that you get to just focus 100% on you for the rest of your life and and go out and make your goodness happen? Is that the choice you made? Or do you choose to go out and date? Uh, do you choose to date a bunch of people or just one person? Do you? How do you choose the person who you date? Um, do you choose to have children? Um, do you, if you guys chose to have a baby, either a conscious choice or choosing to be idiots and have an accident, uh, who, you, who you, I hope that you turn out to love this kiddo and not call them an accident ever or let them know or refer to them as that. But if it wasn't a purposeful thing, um, did you make that choice? What choice did you make there? Oh my gosh, is that going to, that's one of the probably top five things in life that will put you in a position that is very different than if you made the other choice. Um, have you chosen to go into debt? Are you a debt kind of person? And if you've made that choice, that is another probably top five choice um, that your life will be very different. If you have several credit cards that have big balances on them, and when I say big, I mean for your living situation that they're big. Like a lot of people will put their monthly living expenses on a credit card and make sure they pay it off by the end of the month so that there are no fees. Um, and so if you're living a $50,000 a month lifestyle and you're putting it all on the credit card and then paying it off at the end of the month, I'm not going to call that debt. I'm going to just call that using a financial tool in a certain way. But if you have a an outstanding uh, amount that you owe at the end of each month on a really cool piano you decided to buy or a boat or a car or a, uh, uh, some toy or credit cards, whatever. If you have made the choice to be a debt kind of person, your life is going to be very different than if you were the opposite. Um, if you have chosen to read Dave Ramsey books or watch and listen to a bunch of his stuff and go to his classes. And if that has been what you've done and you have never been into real debt and you've never had to try to unbury yourself from that hell hole, um, your life is going to be very different than if you had chosen the alternative. Um, oh, one good thing. I just said, um, and I recognized it. There was no reason to say, um, I was communicating. I, I wasn't communicating something that was important. Uh, if you go to Toastmasters, they actually have an um and an ah counter. There's somebody who is, but you know, you'll take your turn doing it. You listen to a person's speech and uh, as they're talking, you mark down when they say, uh, or um, or ah, um, it's a, it's a cool thing because even now I haven't been in Toastmasters in probably over 10 years, but I just caught myself saying, um, would have been nothing wrong with a silence there instead of the um. Bad habit. I still do it some, but uh, yeah, another thing that I benefited by going to Toastmasters and learning from from that opportunity. Are you hypersensitive about how you treat people? Uh, do you really think about it when you have your music going in the backyard while you're building a doghouse? Uh, do you really think about your neighbors and how that music is going to affect them. Is it too loud? Is it annoying? Have you shot a text message to your one neighbor who would be able to hear it and said, Hey man, I'm out building a doghouse, listening to music. If the music bugs you, please shoot me a text and I'll turn it down. Have you been hypersensitive like that? Have you thought about how you look and smell and, and sound to others? Have you been kind and generous? Have you been helpful to people? Um, have you just, have you been a, good person? Will people have good memories about you and good things to say? Or do you have a handful or 50 people who don't really care for you? Uh, have you organized your life in a way that almost everybody likes you? I can think of probably three, maybe four people who don't like me. Uh, like actively don't like me. Um, there are over 7 billion people who don't like or dislike me because they don't know I exist. But of all the people who I've had uh, interactions with, almost everybody is either indifferent or slightly dislikes me or is slightly liking me or really likes me. Uh, but if you go to the grocery store clerks with whom I have checked out in their line, um, none of them are going to say, oh, it's that jerk. None of them are going to say that. I'm always nice and friendly and a good guy. And I've made that choice since early in life. Uh, my first letter of commendation, I think was when I was in ninth grade. 
uh, and I went to the, we were in Morristown, Tennessee, and I went to the boys club there. It was like, we lived in the projects and I went to this, uh, I'm not even sure what it was actually called, but it was, it was for poor projects, kids, uh, to go and have a good influence on them. And there was a, a guy there who taught a fishing class in the pool inside, but showed us how to, you know, put a worm on a, a hook and how to cast and such. And I, at the end, offered to help carry his uh, stuff out to his vehicle. And he actually wrote this letter of recommendation for me, just saying, I, you know, for years I've been doing this and I rarely even get a thank you. And not only was Shepard grateful, but he also offered to help carry stuff. And this is a, you know, this is a good one. Hire this guy. Um, and this was at like age 13, 14, something like that. And it made me a geek. It made me boring. It didn't make me cool. Like if I'd been the football captain, but being able to present that at my, at, at some job four or five years later, well, that was handy. Um, I'm like, Oh, okay. This guy has a record of being decent. Um, there's, there's something to show for it other than his mom saying, no, he's a really good kid. No, I actually had an outside person who would write a letter of recommendation for me. That was cool. Have you led your life? Have you chosen to make decisions that puts you in that situation as well. Um, if so, then your life is likely going to be different than if you hadn't. Do you watch educational videos on YouTube or do you scroll through brainless stuff? Now there's, I do both. Um, and by the way, all of these things, there's some that I think there's the obvious answer. Of, okay. I should be reading a lot more nonfiction books. Okay. I shouldn't watch sports. Okay. I shouldn't drink a lot. Okay. I shouldn't, uh, there are so many choices that we make that I, I'm not saying I always make the right choice. Um, I, I think I make a lot of really good choices and I also make some choices that are bad and I'm probably going to continue making those bad choices. Uh, and when I say bad, I mean, they're not going to give me the result in the long term that I want. It's ridiculous that I do that, but I, I've been doing it a long time and I, I don't, see myself having the gumption later this afternoon to change that about me should, but I don't see it. So I'm not coming down on you. If you have made a bunch of bad choices, I'm not saying, Oh, life's done. Um, if you're young, you have time to change this. And if you haven't been making good choices and you are only 50 or 60 years old, you're not going to be able to get nearly as far as someone who's 20 years old and makes good choices from that point forward. Just like compounding interest, um, this stuff compounds upon each other. Uh, if you didn't have a wealthy parents and you ended up having horrible teeth and then you spent your whole youth and young adulthood losing teeth and had to get all gnarly and you didn't go get that taken care of because you couldn't afford it because you were broke. By the way, nobody who is productive in life, like really productive. I'm not talking about 40 hour a week workers, but I'm talking about full time workers, like people who work 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week and, and produce value. They never use the word broke to refer to a financial status. That's a poor people word. Do you use that word? If you do, then maybe you want to change the cast or the class that you're in. Okay, that was a tangent. Uh, where was I going with that? Oh, um, we, we make these bad choices, um, but we can change it at any point. It, it's not too late to change it. Way harder if you're older, but you can still make those those changes. So talking about what do you do? What do you watch on social media? Do, do you just scroll through Facebook? Do you go on Twitter and argue with people who don't care? Do you watch educational videos on YouTube? Do you watch fun videos on YouTube? Some combination of both. Those choices are going to add up. Um, I, last night, my wife and I sat around and watched uh, three, four, five videos on street epistemology. Well, epistemology was too big of a word for me for many years. I've rejected it. I've heard people say it, but I never really understood what it meant. I said, you know what? That's technical philosophy jargon. I don't even want to, too big of a word to learn and remember. It's just not important enough to me. Oh my gosh. I was watching these, this, this, uh, street epistemology method methodology, and it's opened up this whole new world. Guess what? I'm going to watch a ton more of in the upcoming weeks, months, years. And I bet it's going to lead to another thing that I didn't even know existed. That's going to spark my curiosity and make me have a new excited passion to pursue. Um, so what are you doing with that? Are you wasting your time? Or are you doing some positive things that are bringing about clever new directions in life? Um, next thing on my list, did you get divorced or are you still married? 
when the hard times came and they wanted to leave or you wanted to leave, did, did you, or did he just say, yeah, let's, let's, let's fight this through. Let's keep this going. Um, let's, let's go through the tough times and eh, let's do this for the rest of our lives. Have you been deeply committed to that? Um, did you make that happen or not? And it's not always your fault. Probably you played a huge role in it if you got divorced. Um, if you didn't get divorced, you probably played a huge role in that too. Um, and I don't ever plan to get divorced. Like it's it's just, it's a decision I made. It's a contract I entered into. Um, now, young people really think about it as that contract. Uh, is it smart to enter in, into a lifelong contract with a changing other human being who is very different than you. Like the whole concept of marriage, I'm not sure it's the greatest idea in its current structure. However, I am happy that I got married. I love my wife. I will be married to her forever. That's my, that's my plan, my goal. I don't have any backup plans there. Um, that is, that's a decision I've made. And because I've made that decision over 20 years ago and have been committed to that decision, my life is very different than if we had gotten divorced in five years or the seven year itch or 15 years or yesterday, whatever. My life is very different. And I think it's way better. Some people might say, hey, my life's way better because I got divorced. Just know that it's going to make a big difference. Okay, so in this this last one is, uh, have you read the top 10 books that I would recommend to you or whomever your other uh, mentors are, or maybe I'm not even your mentor. Uh, ha have you listened to your mentors? Have you said, okay, I should probably have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and Cashflow Quadrant by the kind of quacky dude, Robert Kawasaki or whatever. Um, yeah, everybody should have read those books. Everybody should read Millionaire Next Door. Uh, everybody should read Modern Persu Persuasion Strategies. Um, everybody should read these, this handful of books. Uh, I would say maybe 10, 12, 15 books. Uh, if you've read those, your life is going to be very different. If you read them in that high school, college age, your life is going to be very different. And if you haven't read them yet, eh, it's probably time to, unless you're really old and you're just tired and done. Um, it, it, or if you've accomplished what you want to accomplish, um, if you're really happy and content where you are, don't waste your time. Um, some of the books are kind of meaty and not enjoyable reads. Um, I think the information makes it worth it. But yeah, if you're already have everything you want, you're not real sure why you're watching this video. Thank you. But uh, you don't need to you don't need to go out and put a bunch of effort into reading new books and learning new things. If you're if you're 83 and have the exact financial situation you want and blah, blah, blah. Well, you've already outlived <laughs> your expected lifespan. Don't don't waste your time. Um, I'm going to call that good for now. Uh, let me know what things I missed. I think I, I had 20 ish things here on my list uh, and they're probably 50 things that are really important uh, of those. Some are way more important. What did I miss that it would be a top 10 or top 20 thing? What should I have had on the list uh, that would make a big difference one direction or the other? Maybe joining the military or not. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Make, make some comments. Uh, let me know what you think. What did I miss? What should I have included? What did I mention that doesn't really make that big of a difference depending on, on what you choose? Where did I get, where did I get it wrong? Where did I get it right? Um, yeah, hopefully this is helpful to you. Have a have a great day.